Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. Turn your Bible with me to the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 10 to 12. Luke chapter 16 verse 10 to 12. The Bible says they that worship the Lord more worship him in truth and word in spirit. And I believe that we are the children of man that worship the Lord in truth and spirit. I read Luke chapter 16 Verse 10 to 12. He said, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. Verse 11. If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches. Verse 12. And if he have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? Praise the Lord. I, I, I reread uh, verse 12. He said, If you are not faithful in that which is another man's project or another man's something, and trusted in you. He said, how are you going to be faithful in your own things? Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I'm going to preach a message which I tie to managing your resources. Managing your what? Your resources. Or you can put it, you and your resources. Praise the Lord. You know, when we talk about, you know, you need to know and understand that you have to stand in a way to able to manage yourself and manage your resources. Resources are very important. And that's why this place, he began to teach us some certain things. If you cannot or you are not able to manage little things and trust it into your hands, it might not be yours. It might be another person's responsibility or another person's project. If you are not able to manage it, he said, how can you manage your own? Hallelujah. Remember, in school, there is what they call training and examination. Now, you have to learn, you have to be trained. And after the training and after learning, you have to be examined, you have to write exam. Before you begin to end and become your own. Before you be on your own, there must be an exam. Before you become a manager, you must go to school. You must be trained. Hallelujah. Before you become a director, before you become a company owner, most of you people that came from village, most of you have served in one shop or the other. Praise the Lord. Why? You are serving to learn. You are serving in to get knowledge, to acquire more knowledge. But we are living in the day that people don't, do not want to serve. They want to become a boss just at any time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Some people want to be rich without learning how to be rich. Without being trained how to manage riches, how to manage resources. And that's the reason why in Luke chapter 16, Jesus was speaking in parable. How can you manage your own if you are not able to manage another person's or another responsibility entrusted in your hand? Hallelujah. Today, you can see what is happening everywhere. Even in ministry, even in business, in everywhere. People want to become a boss just overnight. People want to be rich and become rich just overnight. I was telling you previously that every rich man, especially man of integrity, every rich man, they don't train their children how to eat money. They train their children how to do what? How to work hard. Yet, there are billions of dollars in their account. They make sure to give their children training. 
Why are they training their children? Because they want their children to be somebody, to be a manager. To be able to handle responsibilities. But today, we are finding everywhere is a God. That is why you see somebody. It is not all about how they give you now one million dollars. No. Now, the problem is how will you manage that? You can see today there are people you have gotten money, you have gotten dollars, you have gotten millions of dollars. But yet, somebody who has just come on 10,000 ringgit is better than you. And is doing well more than you. Are you with me? Yes, sir. He is doing well more than you. I have seen some people, they do better, they celebrate all kinds of celebration. They spent almost 10,000 ringgit. How did you get such money? Is it the money you acquire by sweat? Is it the money you acquire by a process? Because if it is a money which you acquire by process and by sweat, a money which go through a process, you will not do that. Are you with me? You will never do that. You will not mismanage it. Because anything that comes from your sweat, from your labor, you are very careful when you spend it. Is somebody hearing this out of my voice? But anything that comes just fly into your hand, of course, you will misbehave. And that is why many people are misbehaving today. Are you hearing this out of my voice? That is why everybody they are misbehaving. You will see somebody very loyal, very, very obedient. But when Ringel began to enter his pocket, he began to tell you that he is boss, his master. Hallelujah. Amen. He began to let you know that you are wrong. You that is coaching him, you that is teaching him, you that is showing him the way. He began to let you know that you are very wrong. Praise the Lord. Why? He is not the one speaking now, it is what? It is money that is speaking. It is money that is what? That is speaking. He suddenly become arrogant. He suddenly become rebel. Hallelujah. Amen. And those things are the problems. They are the things that is affecting life that we have today. Now, I take you into the book of Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 6 to 8. It says, Lazy people should not, should learn a lesson from the way of hands and the way they live. Verse 7. They have no chief or leaders. Verse 8. But they store all their food during the summertime, getting ready for the heat. Winter. They store up their food during what? The summertime. Getting ready for the winter. Meaning that they save. They manage their resources. Whatever they have, they manage it. Praise the Lord. But today, you can see. Check out your life. If those who studied in university or you studied in higher school, you know how many years it took you from primary school to the university level, which is almost 10 to 20 years. Praise the Lord. Primary school, six years or five years. Secondary school, six years, which is 12. University, diploma, stock university, which is almost more than six years. Hallelujah. Everything is broken 20 years. In your 20 year struggle, in your 20 year level, and you get a job. Remember, you have been trained. There is no way you will live a reckless life. That is why when you see people living a reckless life, they are illiterate. They are fools in the streets. Is somebody hearing me? They are what? Illiterate and fools. Educated man, somebody who is highly educated, knowledgeable, who have never, who have suffered, you can't see him misbehave. Praise the Lord. You can never see an educated man misbehave. Only those who have an 
common sense. They are the ones that do what? That behave like a an animal. Not human. Hallelujah. Now, let us go to the book of Proverbs chapter 30, verse 24 to 25. He said, There be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceeding wise. He mentioned, he said, the ants. He said, the ants are not strong people, but they prepare their food all the time in the summer. Praise God. Very wise. Very intelligent. They are small, but they are knowledgeable. Hallelujah. They are small, but they are mighty. So, we are going to learn something from ants. They are tiny insects. They play the vital role. They teach a lot of things to us. Now, according to the book of Proverbs, the place we read, and they are small in creature, but they have strengths. And they are not big in size, but yet they play an important characteristic. Hallelujah. They play an important role. And they have no guide, but they have self discipline. Hallelujah. Amen. They have self discipline and self motivated. They motivate one another. They are disciplined. They move with orderliness. When you see art, anytime you see them, they line up. They don't scatter. Are you with me? They do what? They like drop a piece of sugar here. Within five minutes, you will see an ant. And when you see them, they do what? They line up. Say they line up. Say they line up. You see? Orderliness. They are very smart. They cooperate very well because they are targeting to achieve aim. What is that aim? Food. To store all their food. And they are ready to carry heavy things. They are tiny, but they carry. If you put a heavy biscuit here now, you will see, no matter how small they are, they will do what? They will carry it. They are not carrying it for anything, but they are carrying to do what? To store it. For what? For future. Hallelujah. For what? For future. So now we are going to learn lessons from ants. Because ants, they have a lot of things to teach us. And what lesson can we learn from ants? I have eight things that you can learn today from ants. Number one, ants, they are very hard working. Praise the Lord. Remember, I am teaching you yourself and your resources, how to manage it. Number one, hard working. Now, when we talk about hard working, we are not talking about doing job that is heavier than you. We are talking about people who are focused. People who have planned. We are talking about people who want to achieve a goal and achieve an aim. Hard working is not only when you go out every day, no. Hard working is when you plan well and pursue your plan and pursue your goal. Hallelujah. They are hard work working. In the book of Proverbs chapter 2 verse 11, he said, whoever walk is land will have plenty of bread. But he who follow work less for sure, he said he lacks it. Like as many are fully easy way, work less for sure. Because you lack sense. Praise the Lord. But a man who has sense, you will always work hard. You will always pursue the things that will benefit your future. Things that will benefit all your life. You know, when you see them line up on their daily basis, they work hard even on summer period. All the time, both night, both broad daylight, they are working. They don't give any chance at all. They take advantage of every opportunity. That is why when you throw meat within five minutes, you will see them. 
when you throw any item that is eatable, sweet or salty, within five minutes you will do all, you will see them. Now, they are consistent all the time. They are there all the time. They are working all the time. They are working for their future. Praise the Lord. They don't sleep like the lazy people sleep. They don't slumber. But every time they are working out. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you, my brothers and my sisters. Please don't destroy the, 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 the Christian. I want to encourage you, my brother, my sister. It is time for you to know that working hard is very, very important. Be consistent all the time. You are there. You are thinking about future. Is somebody hearing the sound of my voice? Yes, but I tell you the truth, I see that there are people in our broad here. They don't think about future. There are people that don't think that a day and a time shall come they will marry and have children. There are people who are thinking that they will remain homeboy forever. No. You will vote one day. Are you with me? Yes, sir. You will vote? You will get married. If you lie, go and do surgery. You can never cheat nature. Hallelujah. Amen. Even though you are rubbing creams, ah, you can't cheat nature. Hallelujah. Amen. Even though you are painting, you can't cheat nature. If you lie, shave your beard all the time. After a few days, you will see white hair. Are you with me? Yes. The thing will come out. And if you are shaving sticks, or your creepers, you will see everything will reveal. That is your hiding. You discover that you can never cheat nature. You will go one day. Praise the Lord. Those who think that they are in a broad, you know, they have opportunity to enjoy. Hallelujah. You have opportunity to do all to enjoy. You can have boyfriend, have girlfriends, you know, everywhere, and you say enjoyment, enjoyment. That you will not go. You will go very soon. Hallelujah. You need to know you will do what? You will open this thing. Am I speaking the truth? Yes, sir. They are hard working. They work to make and to provide. They work for future. They don't only work for now. You see? They don't only work for now. And the money they get, they don't use it to flesh God. They don't do that. They are very more conscious of what? Of future. That's why they are deceived. Then number two, and have plan and goal-oriented. Plan. Very important. Many does not have plan. There are many here that do not have any plan. If you ask them what is your plan, no plan. No goal. There is nothing they want to achieve in life. Hallelujah. All they focus on is just live today and end today. Live today and end today. My brothers and my sisters, I tell you too, it's only a fool that will not have goal oriented. That will not have plan. Only a fool. Only somebody who is not a knowledgeable person or somebody who does not have sense. Hallelujah. In Proverbs chapter 21 verse 1, he said the plan of the diligent leads surely to the advantage. But everyone who is hasty comes surely to poverty. And are not poor. And you also you will not be poor in Jesus' name. Amen. And they don't lack because they are not, they are intelligent and always planning. They don't lack because they are always what? Planning. They always plan for future. That is why when you throw food here, they will come and take it. And they will carry it to their domain. To where they stay. And they keep it there. 
Praise the Lord. Now you, you cannot let anything from us. There are people here, if I ask you how much have you made since you came to this land, or since you were born, you know, if some people open mouth and tell you, your mind will blow. But they can't do anything with you. Some of you people, you are eating more than you are earning. Hallelujah. Amen. You are spending more than you are earning. You are publishing money more than you are earning. It doesn't work that way. It is time for you to learn. It is time for you to know that you have future, you have tomorrow. Praise the Lord. Know all the scripture that Abraham in the book of Genesis 22, he said God will do what? Will provide. Do you know the situation that Abraham faced such statements? Praise the Lord. Abraham was working by faith. And Abraham was obeying God. God will provide. That does not mean when God has provided, you are still telling God that he will provide. God is not a fool. The Bible says he is not a man that he should lie. Are you with me? You have God provide for me and he provided for you yesterday. And after he provided for you, you sit on the throne. I am the king of kings now. And after a few days, few months, they didn't disappear. And you say, God, provide for me. It's not a God that you can doubt. It's not a God that you can play with. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when you say, God, provide, that is when you are lacking, when you are in need, when he has not provided for you. Hallelujah. They are God oriented. They plan very well. Number three, they are patient. Say patience. Lack of patience have led many people astray. A brother called me a few days ago. He said, Sir, in my house where I stay, somebody had some item of juju, some item that they used to console ritual. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he said he cannot put it in his room because the rooms, they are not clean because there are rules and regulations that need to abide with that. Praise the Lord. And therefore, he has to put it in the bottle. And the bottle is putting it. People are there. Other people are there. You understand? So it becomes a problem. And this is a child of God. Someone who call him himself a Christian. Impatient. I want to be like Mr. A. I want to drive car, the expensive car, when you know you are not up to that standard. Even though 30 years to come, you can never be up to the standard. You know it very well. And by fire by force, of course you will break down. So I am here to speak to your life. Patience is very important. And they are very patient. They are not angry. They don't hurry in line. And they don't destroy their life. There is one thing I love in this nation. In Malaysia. Praise the Lord. Any place you go. Whether you are buying item. Whether in traffic. Whether anywhere. Everybody must be in queue. Hallelujah. Amen. If you go and buy something and people, they will do what? They will kill. Orderliness. Orderliness. And those who came from village, who does not know anything about order, when you see them, they will come up for line and go direct to counter. Is somebody hearing me? I'm telling you the truth. When you see those one that does not have sense, they beat traffic. They don't obey the law. They don't follow the law. And they are thinking that they are wise without knowing that they are what? They are fools. Because that thing you are doing one day, it might lead you into trouble. Because 
you are preaching the law. And when you see that they are patient, they will lie. They will stay on the queue. Hallelujah. This one will carry. Another one will do what? We carry. Another one will carry. That is how they carry, they carry, they carry. Nothing like dragging and struggling. Praise the Lord. In this church, let me tell you, let me announce it to the so that you will hear. We have all darkness in this place. Anybody that walking here and he says he don't want to follow the order of the church, it means he is not part of this ministry. It means he's against the commission of this ministry. Whether you are a pastor, you are a minister, you are a leader, you can enter man's house in the book of Mark. He said, you cannot enter a strong man's house and destroy his goods without first destroying the strong man. Praise the Lord. Amen. So if you are a child of God, God is a God of godliness. When you go to any place as a visitor, when you enter any house, whether in the village or whether anywhere, I remember the former prime minister, when he visited some villages, they were all sitting on the floor. He sat down because that is what he was welcomed with. When you enter a visit, as a visitor enter somebody's house, there is no chair. And they only use mark to sit down. What are you going to do? You will sit down. Are you with me? If you enter somebody's place, they use a native cup to give you water. You will do what? You will drink it. That is what they have. You cannot come as a visitor to change the law or change the rules of the family. It is impossible. Are you with me? Everything, even your working place, those who are working. When you enter your workplace, they will give you the rules and regulations that guide the company or the business. Which you need to follow. Are you hearing the sound of my voice? Yes, but why is it that in the church, in the church of Christ, somebody will walk in and he will tell you that this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. He sought not an agent of darkness. He sought not an agent and not against the works of the kingdom. God is God of all that it is. And they are patient. They move with all that it is. When you meet seniors, follow seniors. Respect them. When you see your elders, respect them. Follow them so that you will learn from them. Hallelujah. Is somebody hearing the sound of my voice? Every child of God, you must know this. You must know that patience is very important. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 9. He said, be not hasty in the spirit to be angry. For anger rested in the bosom of fools. Romans 8 25. He said, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. With patience, do what? Wait for it. Patience. Be patient. Nobody is dragging anything with you. Even you are hustling. Nobody is running competition with you. Why do you need to be hasty and kill yourself and destroy yourself? Hallelujah. When your pastor advises you the way that you should go, you feel offended. When your pastor telling you this is how it is, but I said, go I keep on telling you people, I'm a father. I am a father, biological father to my children, and also spiritual father to many people. Present even to pastors. Hallelujah. I cannot lead you to the wrong way. I cannot tell you what is wrong to you. I will only tell you what concerns your future. Praise the Lord. Say be patient. Say be patient. Very, very important. 
don't always realize. Always be patient. There is blessings of God in patience. I know that some of you who have been in this land for a long time, you are still patient. Your time shall come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your waiting time shall come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone who is patient will always eat the fruit of their labor. There is always fruit to benefit whenever you exercise patience. Number four. And they are consistent and timing. Say timing. Time. Say timing. Time. Why then? In your daily basis, they line up for food. When you throw food, immediately, if you don't reach five minutes, you will see them. They are there. Without excuse. They are there and they are there on time. Without delay. Praise the Lord. Is somebody hearing me? They are there without war, without delay. Galatians 6 9, he said, Let us not be weary in anything we are doing. For in due season we shall walk, we shall reap if we faint not. Consistent. Not today you are on, tomorrow you are on. Those who do business, you need to be consistent in your business. And that is what makes the business to bring profit and to stand. And also, you need to be conscious of timing. You need to know the hour. The hour you should be in the presence of God. The hour you should eat. The hour you should sleep. The hour you should walk. Everything has time. Praise the Lord. So, walk with time. Because now they walk with time. And that's why they never miss opportunities. Anybody who is conscious of time and always conscious of consistency, they never miss opportunities. Are you with me? They never miss what? Opportunities. There are people who are doing business and your business is online. And when they call you, you don't pick up. You are missing your opportunities. Are you with me? You are missing your opportunity. But say, you know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Somebody called you almost five times. You don't pick. Is it? The person will call another person. So that's why you must be consistent and be tiny. Very, very important. Very important. As a pastor, you call me 3 a.m. and you're there. Except that we say, I don't want to pick. But I know. I have seen the call. Praise the Lord. I am there 24 hours. Except I am busy, that's why maybe I cannot pay, but I must call you back. Some people, you call them today. For them to return your call, it took them one day or two days. And maybe you want to give them business. Are you with me? Is such a businessman? No. No, no, no. They are not. You are not qualified to do a business. Hallelujah. Very, very timing and consistent. Number five, they have self-discipline. Say self-discipline. Self-discipline. Very important. And this is where integrity is. Every child of God, everyone that assigned to make success in life must be a man with self-discipline. Self-discipline. If you can't discipline yourself, your business, your future cannot be disciplined. You cannot make something out of something without being self-disciplined. Now, he said, though they don't have a leader, but yet they are very disciplined in their work, lifestyle. And when you talk about the ethics, you will find them to excel on it. You know, and they don't have guide. But yet, everybody they know the right thing to do. Are you with me? They don't tell them this is what you need to do. Because they are self disciplined. They don't tell them this is what is right and this is what is wrong. Because they know what is right and they know what is there. What is wrong? That's how you know a man who is self disciplined. 
where you give him assignment or when you assign him without giving assignment before you know he has fulfilled the assignment without error without fault praise the lord it is time for you to consider to be self-disciplined in all you are doing very very important even in your environment i tell you truth if you are a man with discipline in your environment you will never have problem or trouble in that environment I lived in Venice for almost six years. All the trouble and all kinds of ready, they always come in that place. No one, no enforcement has ever wanted to knock at my door. Praise the Lord. They will knock every door, but they will not knock my door. I know you will say in grace. But I tell you the truth, let's leave grace aside. Let's talk about our self word discipline. Some people don't think that where they stay, it is just the place of their security. If you pollute your environment and pollute where you stay, you are polluting your own self and polluting your house. But if you are not applying self discipline, but anything you do, it will work for you, it will benefit for you. Hallelujah. You think Malaysia people, you think they don't see, they see. They know you. You think they don't know you. They know where you stay. They know you, they know what you are doing. Hallelujah. Amen. I see some people in their door, they will put a Chinese uh, uh, emblem in their listen. No, you are doing it wrong. They know that you, Africa, you are staying there. Hallelujah. Amen. Even they know your face. So those who are still acting that, that is old pattern. Are you with me? The most important thing is be self word discipline. Live a good life in your environment. Live a life that is right. When you live a life that is right, right thing will work for you. Are you with me? Is somebody hearing the sound of my voice? Self-discipline. Number six, they are unified and concerned for others. They are not selfish. They are not what? Act are not selfish. They don't pull one another down. They don't try to speak or gossip behind. They don't do that. Like as people are gossiping pastor. And even talk against pastor. Praise the Lord. It is a blessing to me. You can talk against me, but don't talk against my wife. That is why I will become a liar. I hear you, sir. Hallelujah. Amen. Anybody can talk against me. You are permitted. I give you 100% permission. But leave my family. Leave my wife, leave my children. Face me. Hallelujah. They don't gossip. They always think about others, the welfare of others. They are always concerned for others. But today, do you concern for others? No. You want to pull your friend down. You want to kill your friend. You want to destroy your friend. You want to make sure that your friend will not go forward. That's what is happening today. You see them lining up. They expect that that thing will reach them when they get to their tongue. And that is why when they are lining up, this one will take his own and go. The other one will take his own and go and carry. And at the end, they will land up in their territory. You see how unity, how they, they, they are united. And today, family to family are fighting. Brother to brother, they are fighting. Friends to friends, they are all, they are fighting. Fighting against one another. Even in the house of God. Member of church and member of church are fighting. Minister and minister are fighting. Pastors and pastors, they are fighting. Hallelujah. Is it of God? My brother is not of God. Are you with me? It is not of God. Of God. Unity is very 
Christian partner because the power of unity. It is what Jesus says. Are you with me? Don't envy. Don't jealous of people. Because envy will not bring good to you. Any man who envy all the time, you will only see him going down. You only see her going down. When you envy people, let me tell you, when you envy, the more you envy them, the more they prosper. You know why they prosper more? The prosperity that's supposed to come your way will be what? Transferring to them. Because you have become a witchcraft. If you are a man who can be a general, you are a witch. And the Bible says that the wicked fall and the wicked will not do what? Will not rise again. Are you with me? So that is the danger of envy and the danger of jealous. So those who are very good in that, you will not prosper if you are a man who envy and who jealous. Prosperity is very far from you. But if you are a man who is always concerned with others, prosperity is always at your door. Praise the Lord. Because you are a good man. And every good man attracts good uh, things. Amen. Amen. Number seven, wisdom and knowledgeable. They, are, they have wisdom. They are well knowledgeable. That is the reason why when you draw something, they will quietly come. You see? Very alert. They are watched all the time. Amen. They are not fools. And the Bible says that we have to be wise. In all of our ways. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 14. He said, The mind of the intelligence seek knowledge, but the heart of the fools fill with folly. That is a lack of good sense. The mouth of the fools, they all fill, fill with lack of uh, good sense. Number eight, and they know how to save and walk on summer warmth and hot season. Savings. I'm going to talk. A little more about this. Check out your life. Check out your earnings. Check out all that you are getting. Are you saving or not? Do you have savings? Especially those who are at the tender age. Do you save? Do you work and save? So many are working but they don't save. So many earn they don't save. That small thing you are getting. Hallelujah. That little thing you are earning. That little thing that you are receiving. If you are saving them in three years, in four years, in five years, you see how it grows. Hallelujah. Let me tell you one thing about savings. Savings bring motivation. Savings bring strength. Savings increase your morale. Praise the Lord. But if you don't save, you discover that every time you feel depressed. Are you hearing the sound of my voice? Yes, sir. It is time for you to notice. Sometimes when you remember what you save in account, you feel what? Joy, especially in the time of difficulties. In the time of circumstance, when you remember what you have saved through your earning and through your labor, you will do what? You will feel energized. You will feel encouraged. Now you don't have savings and you have an affliction. Tell me how will you come out? What will motivate you? What will encourage you? You discover that is why and that's the reason why when some people went to have challenges and have circumstances because no savings, no hope, nothing, no trustee, there is nothing. And that is why their depression continues to harm them and cause them to them. Praise the Lord. So I want to encourage you because I think they know how to save. And why they save? They save for future. Are you with me? They save for what? For future. And I pray that after today, people will begin to save in the name of Jesus. Amen. You will begin to save in the name of Jesus. Proverbs 21 20 said, He said, The wise man save for the future. But the stupid people, they spend their money as fast as they get it. 
You heard? Stupid people, they spend their money as fast as what? As they make it. But the wise people, they save for what? For future. They save for future. They save for future. I encourage you to learn how to save. And as you continue to save, you see God will help you. And before you know, you will grow assets. You will have assets and have an account. Praise the Lord. Am I talking too much or am I speaking the facts? Proverbs 13 11, he said, He who gathered little by little make it grow. Listen carefully. He who gathered little by little make it more, he make it grow. <laughs> there are people you are expecting big things unto yourself. Let me tell you, that big thing may not come. Everyone is not equal to be big and just suddenly become big. There are people who have a life span or a life system whereby they can only be big through little. Are you with me? They can only grow big through what? Through little. But many are expecting to become big overnight. Not everyone has such opportunity. Is somebody hearing me? Not everyone has that privilege of become big overnight. I want to get it very clear. So it is time for you to be considering every letter that is coming your way that you should be gathering it and be saving it. Stupid people, they spend their money as fast as they get it. But those who are wise, they gather a little by little and they make it grow. Number nine, they don't fear to break barriers. They have no fear. Any place they enter, anywhere there is food, and we go there without restriction, without limitation. Hallelujah. And I pray that nothing shall put us under before you. And nothing shall put barriers before you in the name of Jesus. He said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. Second Timothy verse 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 7. Number 10. And the last we pray. Oneness, agreement, and unity. Oneness. Very, very important. Partners. They are very conscious of partnership. And that will work, work for them. As I said, stop betraying your friends. Rather be a partner to your friends. Be a partner to your wife, to your husband. Be a partner to those who you are doing business with. Stop the heart of betraying and cheating. Praise the Lord. And chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. He said, in the days of Pentecost, they were all with one accord. They gathered in unity. That's why we go to Genesis chapter 11. The Bible said that men journey from the east and they gather in Shinem and they begin to build a tower. And that tower was made in progress because of unity. I pray that the power of unity will rest upon you. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let us pray. My preaching may not be so uh, happy with you, but I tell you, you have received an invitation. How to save as and say, praise the Lord. And I pray that God will help you to be saving and saved from now henceforth. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will not labor in vain anymore. Amen. No canker worms and caterpillar will eat up your answers anymore. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. say, my father my father, my father, my father, from now henceforth. I will be saving my money. I will be saving my resources. I will be saving my assets. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Power to manage your assets and resources. Begin to declare. Say, Father, help me. Help me to manage what you have entrusted into my hand. Help me to manage the assets you have given to me. Help me to manage them. Help me. Help me, Father. Help me. Let me be the president of the city of Brazil. Father, we get the praise. Father, we get the praise. In the name of Jesus.
Jesus Christ. I want to pray for some people before I get the mic. If you are here, I'm going to pray for you. God is going to deliver you from this. Hallelujah. Don't be shy. If you can come out, I tell the truth. That mistake and that error I is going to me. If you are here, only let us tell your hand. I'm going to pray for you. And God is going to intervene. Please make sure you, you uh, social distance. Social distance. Hallelujah. Amen. Our says never stay your hand. Today, that demon will leave you today. Amen. That power will leave you today. Amen. Let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you. It is not It's not all about getting plenty money every day. It's all about what you have. You are able to do what? To manage it. To control it. I keep on telling you there are people you have seen more than 10 million. Naira. But there are people you have only 1 million. But it's a, a big asset for you. Praise the Lord. But there are people you have seen, you have seen 10 million per day, and then you can't give a kind of it. That's how it works. So now we're going to pray today. I'm going to break that yoke today. Every yoke that made you go spend money and live a lavish life, every yoke and every power that sponsored it, that you're not able to manage your resources, today I break you loose from it. I break you loose from it. I break you loose from it. You are free in the name of Jesus. You are free in the name of Jesus. He come to destroy and he come to kill. Devil will come to steal your finance. How does he steal your finance? He make sure that you will not save it. He make sure that it's scatter. Today I pray for you. Every power that scatters your finance by the power of the Holy Ghost, that power is raised today. That power is raised today. That power is raised today. That power is destroyed today. In the name of Jesus. Father, no, as they lift up their hands from today, money shall begin to rest in your hand. Amen. Every little that enters your hand shall multiply. Every little that enters your hand shall be Every little that enters your hand, it shall spread out. In the name of Jesus. Father, your finance. Whatever that robbing your assets, today you are free. Amen. Today you are delivered. Amen. Today you are free. Amen. Today you are delivered. Amen. I command your account to begin to increase. Amen. From today your assets begin to increase. Amen. From today your income begin to increase. Amen. From today your service begin to increase. Amen. Whatever that reduces your service today is banished by fire. Deliver something that happens. Father Lord, everyone that come out here to seek Lord, fresh encounter, Amen. fresh life, Amen. fresh beginning of savings, Amen. from today henceforth, Amen. you shall begin to save. 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 Amen. Not to rob your finance again. Amen. Not to rob your assets again. Amen. Amen. Father, oh God, I relate the power yes. of management. Amen. Power to manage assets. Amen. Power to manage resources. Amen. Power to handle wealth. Receive the name of Jesus. Amen. Deuteronomy 8 he says, is he that giveth the power to make wealth? The power to control, the power to manage. Amen. Father, to, from today henceforth, yes, let that anointing come upon you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Jesus. You have restored your finances. Amen.
God has restored your assets. Amen. Watch from now henceforth. Yes, Lord. Your account shall be crazy. Amen. Devil has no more in your hands. Devil's hands no more in your assets. Devil's hands no more in your business. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are hiding from God. Amen. If I touch your head, you go back to your seat. You are hiding Thank you.